So now let's look at installing ADRMS or Active Directory Rights Management Service. Now we'll get it started and then we'll talk a little bit about it while it's installing. So we'll go to, get to the right one, Manage, Add Roles and Features, and the same stuff we always do when we're installing a new role. Whoops, not too far ahead though. We're going to do Active Directory Rights Management Services. Now this is going to use a bunch of uh, IIS tools. So we're going to go ahead and add all of those additional roles, and it'll pick the ones that we need. It's fine. We don't have to worry about it. Uh, we'll choose under Role Services. We could choose just ADRMS, which we have to use. We can also use Identity Federation support, and basically that will identify or integrate uh, RMS with Federation Services. Remember, Federation Services are for authentication across two different uh, domains that aren't integrated. Um, and so this will extend the ability of RMS across the Federation connection. We're not going to use that, so I'm going to leave that there, but I wanted you to be aware of it. Uh, for role services for IIS, we'll just leave it and we'll choose install. All right, so this is going to install ADRMS. Now let's talk about what ADRMS is. RMS, Rights Management Services, has to do with controlling access to files. Now, we already have file access through NTFS, right? But NTFS just controls file permission access or file system access. So the ability to save, to delete, to create a new file, to edit a file, to make it read-only, all of those things are managed by um, NTFS but it only manages the file system interaction with it. So once you get it opened up into an application, NTFS doesn't really control what you can do with it. And that's where ADRMS comes in. RMS, or the Rights Management Service, lets you define what can be done with a file. For example, can you print the file? Can you create a copy of the file? Can you copy and paste data out of the file? What are you allowed to do with that file once it's open? Now, the way ADRMS works, it involves several different components here. So, it only works with an RMS uh, aware application. So, Microsoft Exchange, Microsoft Office, th things like this are RMS aware applications. You can even develop an application that's RMS aware using some Microsoft toolkits. But, uh, the way it works is you publish an application, or not an application, you publish a file. So you take a file, you publish it using RMS. And what that does is that encrypts that file so nobody else can use it unless they're using RMS. It encrypts that file, and then it attaches a little certificate to that file, which basically says, this is where we published it from, this is who you're going to have to uh, contact to get to put in a claim to this file. So when an RMS-aware application goes to open that file, it reads that published information, and it sends a request to the RMS server saying, all right, I want to access this file. The RMS server then validates access and sends back to the um, RMS aware application, this is what this user can do with this file. And then the RMS aware application is going to limit what you can do with that file. So let's say we have a file, a Word document that is extremely sensitive and we don't want anybody printing the document. We need to make sure that they only look at it at our site. So we don't allow printing. We don't allow copying and pasting. Uh, we don't allow exporting. We don't allow anything like that. And when we publish that, it encrypts that file. So now if somebody tries to copy that file off to a flash drive and take it somewhere else, what they have is an encrypted file they can't access. If they try to open it in a different application, let's say LibreOffice or Google Docs are not RMS aware, it can't open that file because it's encrypted. But when they go to open it in Word, Word will see that RMS certificate and it will request access, uh, put in a claim or request access to that file with the RMS server. The RMS server authenticates the user, sends back to Word and says, all right, don't allow the user to print the file, export the file, copy and paste out of that file. And so then Word, being RMS aware, will do exactly that. And then the user only gets access to 
the functions that they should have with that file. And then when they close it, it's saved again as an encrypted file, still linked back to the RMS server. So that's the basic idea of the purpose of RMS and how it functions. Now it can be a very useful thing in high security environments where we're really worried about the confidentiality of these files. RMS can be a great, great tool to add to our repertoire. Now, the installation of it is fairly straightforward. Now, this is, you can tell, I've been talking here for a while. This is taking a little while to install RMS, and that's because of all the IIS stuff that it has to do with it as well. All right, so let's go ahead and close this and open up our notifications and now we can perform some additional configuration on our RMS server. So click next. We're going to create a new ADRMS cluster. We can have a root cluster for certification and licensing or a licensing only cluster. And we're going to go with a root cluster because it's our first one. We're going to specify the database server. We're just going to use a Windows internal database rather than tying to an SQL database. Once again, we're going to need to use a service account. And ideally, what you would have done is you would have created a service account already. Now, if you haven't, we can go through and create a user account fairly quickly. So let's go to Tools, and actually, I'm going to have to go to my other server because I don't have uh, Active Directory users and computers on here because this one isn't a domain controller. So I'm going to pause the video while I hop out real quick and configure a a user account and then I'll pop back in and we will restart the video. Okay, so I went ahead and created the account and so we'll hit specify and then we'll type in the account that we're using. ADRMS is the account that I created and the password. Now remember when you create an account for a uh, a service account when you create and this needs to be a standard user account not a group managed service account so when you create a user account for a service remember that you need to make sure it's set so that the password never expires use a long complex password set it to never expire that's the great thing about group managed service accounts is they automatically manage their passwords and they rotate them but if you're using a standard uh, user account as a service account then you can do that. Now, for this particular service account, you want one that's going to be a member of domain users, not nothing else. The wizard is going to go ahead and give it all the additional permissions it needs. All right. Next is going to be cryptographic mode. Cryptographic mode 2 is way more secure. Cryptographic mode 1 is there for backwards compatibility. Only if you have much older systems. If you don't need it, use cryptographic uh, mode 2. So our cluster key storage, we can use CSP key storage or use the ADRMS centrally managed key storage. This is going to be a little easier because we don't have to use a cryptographic service provider. But if you have one that you wanted to use, that's where you would choose it. And then we're going to set a cluster key password. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and retype this so it's whatever we're going to use for our password and then our cluster website uh, if you have already set up a website you can use it if not we can just use the default website and that's probably going to be the easier one unless we're running multiple websites on this server which ideally you wouldn't want to be doing so and then we can choose whether to use SSL encrypted connections, which is probably going to be your best bet. Although in this case, I'm going to use unencrypted because we're doing a demo and I don't want to deal with the SSL configuration at the moment. And then we'll set our fully qualified domain name, and that's going to be the fully qualified domain name of the machine. So this is how those um, RMS aware applications are going to communicate with the RMS server is going to be using IIS or their website uh, on this um, fully qualified domain name with this IP address. All right, a licensor certificate, we're going to create a new one. So I'm going to do ADRMS. 
and then we're going to register the SCP now and install. All right, so at this point, we've configured ADRMS, and this right here, our post -con installation configuration, will take us through the, and I didn't log in here as a domain administrator. So, um, which means I didn't log in with the right level of permissions. So, um, basically what I would have to do is log in with the right level of permissions and then run back and do that again. So, um, I'll do that. I'm not going to make you go through it again. I'll go through it again before we record our next video, which will take you through some basics of configuring uh, ADRMS.